everybody. We are so glad that you've decided to tune in online and join us this morning. Unfortunately, we are not able to meet together in the building, but we can still meet together, thankfully, through Facebook. And we just ask that wherever you are, that you just make that room in your home, in your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, wherever it is, it's no different than if we were gathered together in the sanctuary this morning. We've got some worship and a wonderful word for Pastor Thurman coming about, continuing on in his series with the uh, Foundation for Life. So if you just want to stand up on your feet, we're going to get ready to worship and to start off this service this morning. You see the weapon. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to try us. God will never fail. Yeah, my God will never fail. Cause I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yeah, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. The battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh. There's, power. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah, every war he wages, he will win. Yeah, I'm not backing down from any time. Cause I know how this story is. Cause I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Yeah, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord.
turn it for good. You turn it for good. And you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Every breath we could ever breathe. 
Good morning, everybody. Hope all is well this first Sunday of our new year, 2021. And obviously, it's a little different than what we had planned. But because of some circumstances uh, that have happened in our church family, uh, we felt it would be important to bring the message to you, but do it in a safe way. Uh, we have had several that have tested positive for the COVID-19 uh, virus and we're just trying to be safe. Uh, I do want to let you know that we do not believe it originated in the service from last Sunday. We believe several had already uh, contracted uh, the virus and the symptoms just started showing up. And just as important for us to be safe according to the guidelines that have been given us. So we're going to be doing this virtually today. And uh, we're going to have a virtual service on Wednesday. And then we will let you know later on in the week. Uh, what happens, but I just ask that you would just keep our church in prayer. I know a lot of churches have gone through this, and uh, we believe everybody's going to be okay. We're praying. God's just going to continue to bring healing where healing is needed, but we still believe that we can gather together. The, the Word of God states that God Himself is not limited to a place or a time that He can move freely, and we are proving that very point this morning because we're coming together through a wonderful technology that allows us to virtually be in the same room even though we can't physically be in the same room. So we appreciate your, your prayers and, and your just uh, considerations. And please just ask the Lord to touch us as a church. We still believe, I said last Sunday, that I believe that this is going to be a, a year where God's going to turn some things around. And uh, I believe we're going to experience that in our church and community as well as across this nation. And I believe revival is coming. I believe it is, is upon us. And if it wasn't so, I don't believe the devil would be working so hard to try to discourage us and just let us think things are going crazy. But I still believe in the power and the authority of the Lord. And so just, just pray with me that the Lord would help us through this time and that uh, at the right time when we come back together, we'll be able to come back together safely and be blessed. Well, what you can do to help me this morning is hit the share button on your, uh, on your Facebook page and uh, hit like. So we would like to get this message out to as many people as possible. And uh, you can help me do that. So do that as well. And, and just finally, before I get into the message this morning, uh, I want to just let you know that if you would like to give, I know that uh, uh, the Lord has blessed us through 2020 with all the you know, the, the disruptions in our schedule and services, God has blessed us, and we're so thankful for that. But if you would like to give, you can go on our webpage, and there will be a place there where you can see where you can give, and it gives you how you can give. Or if you would like to mail it to the church, you can mail it to the P.O. Box 379, Hopewell, Virginia, 23860. I am pleased to announce that we've raised several thousand dollars already toward our roof project that's going to be happening in 2021. And if you would like to help give in support of that, all you have to do is mark it Jesus Fund or Jesus Offering, and uh, it will go toward putting a new roof on our building. We've been in need of a new roof for several years, and we don't believe we can put it off any longer. So we're asking you to to, to partner with us to see that this roof can go on this beautiful building that eventually we'll all be back together with. But until then, we're just going to ask God to touch us and watch over us. And again, if you would like to give or if you'd like to drop it off uh, by the church, just call in advance to make sure someone's here. I've gotten all the preliminaries out of the way. I do believe God's given me a great message. I started a series uh, last week, and I'm going to continue today. Um, but I want to open up with prayer before I get into the message and uh, ask God to touch us. I know we've had some great worship uh, prior to my message this morning. I want to say thank you to Jonathan and Abby for providing that. But I just want to pray God would touch me today, help me to be focused on this word that he's given me, and that you could just be blessed and be encouraged. And, and I, I want you to write some things down this, this morning. Today's the first day of our 21-day fasting and prayer uh, you know, thing that we've been doing. We're starting today here at the church. And I'm going to ask you to just partner with me. And if you could just uh, set aside a meal uh, or, you know, something that you could just say, Lord, I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to spend my time focusing on you and what you're speaking into my heart and praying for our church and praying for our community. Can, can we just do that? I believe if we do that. The Bible says some things come through much prayer and fasting. So over the next 21 days, we're going to be doing that. And I'm asking you to just join with me as we ask the Lord to just move in a mighty way. 
in our community. Would you pray with me this morning? Father God, we're so thankful to, to be able to bring the Word, God, for your, your Word, Lord. The, the Bible says that it will not return void. And so, Father, we pray that as it is expressed through these airwaves, that, God, somebody's life might be changed. And, and Lord, lives will be, Lord, focused upon you. And, and, Lord, as our faith grows, Lord, we know that anything's possible for a child of God. And so, Lord, I pray that you would touch me. I pray that you would anoint those that are listening, God, that you would just help them, Lord, in whatever uh, difficulty they're facing or whatever challenge that is before them in this first Sunday of 2021. I pray, Lord, that you would just bless and strengthen me. Help me, and, Lord, help each one as we continue to move forward in faith. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Um, I started the message on a foundation for life uh, last week. And let me go ahead and get to the scripture, which is the foundational scripture for these series of messages. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27 says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on a rock. And the rains descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand, and the rains descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Last week I talked about how important a foundation is and what I'm going to be doing over these next several weeks is talking about the elements of that foundation or the pillars of a solid foundation. First of all, we know that a foundation needs a cornerstone. And this morning, I'm going to be sharing about the cornerstone of faith, how faith is the cornerstone of the foundation of which God is building in our lives. We also understand family and fitness and uh, uh, finance. All of these things are important. But if we don't have faith, all the other things that we try to do won't be able to be successful. So I want to share with you today about faith, the cornerstone. There was a small boy riding a boy's, a, bu- a bus home from Sunday school and was very proud of the uh, card he had received, which had a picture and a caption that read, Have Faith in God. Then to his dismay, the card slipped from his hand and fluttered out of the window. All of a sudden, he says to the bus driver, stop the bus. I've lost my faith in God. And the driver pulled the bus to a stop. And as the lad climbed out and went to retrieve his card, one of the adult riders smiled and made a comment about the innocence of youth. But a more prospective adult observed, all of us would be better off if we were that concerned about our faith. And this short story sort of shows us that sometimes we don't really understand what it takes to build faith, what it takes to to make faith something that truly comes alive uh, through our lives. I know a lot of us say, I have faith, but this morning I want to ask you just a simple question. How is your faith? Is your faith weakened? Uh, I know uh, I'm doing a message this very morning on faith on faith in God, upon having faith that God's going to do things. And over this last week, I don't mind telling you, my faith has been challenged. You know, some of my worst fears over these last several months have been somewhat realized in the fact that we've had some folks that obviously have, have come down positive. But, you know, I still have faith that God's at work. I still have faith that God's going to do something incredible. I still believe in spite of what I'm seeing sometimes, in spite of what I'm enduring sometimes, that um, God's going to take care of me. God's going to cause good to come out of this difficult season that all of us are in. But in order for faith to really be that foundation, it's got to be a lie. It just can't be something we talk about. It's got to be something that's, that's seen through our action and through the activity of our life. So how can we build? How can we make our foundation of faith strong? How can we let this cornerstone really be the very thing that helps us to move forward in other aspects of our life? I want to talk about the building blocks of faith this morning. And the first thing we need to understand, in order to be able to build something, to build faith, we've got to have a plan of action for life. We've got to take action. A grandfather overheard his granddaughter repeating the alphabet in reverse tones and order, and he asked her, 
um, what are you doing? Basically, she was just going through the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on. He says, what are you doing? She said, I'm, pay- I'm praying, Grandpa. She said, I can't think of the right words to say, so I just say all the letters, and I figure God's going to put them together for me because I don't know what I should pray. <laughs> this is sort of funny to me that she would just be repeating the alphabet, but it does speak again to the belief of a small child that if she just says something, God will make something out of what she's saying and that the Lord will answer her prayer. Now, it's true that God knows what we need before we even ask. But the very act of faith in speaking that of which you have need of shows the Lord that we are a place of which God can move, that we believe what we're saying, that we are truly putting our faith into action. So we must be people of action. We must take action in our lives. So what does that mean to you and I? First of all, we got to walk the talk. We can't just express to people, hey, I believe, and then every other area of our li- lives speak to our unbelief. Whatever we are expressing through our words must be implemented through our actions. We must allow God to move us in ways and in circumstances that at times don't make real sense to us. I'm reminded of the scripture in Hebrews chapter 11. I want to quote to you this morning, which is our theme scripture. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I spoke of this briefly last week, but that's the very foundation of Building a life of faith. It's the substance of things at times we don't understand and we can't see clearly. But we must understand in order for God to move in our lives, we must begin to walk out the very faith of which we express to others. It's not enough to say, I go to church. It's not enough to say, I believe in Jesus. It's not enough to, to express it through you know just our words. It must be some other things that are put in place to allow the faith to grow that you are experiencing. We've got to keep moving forward in spite of the obstacles, in spite of the difficulties, in spite of what we feel or or what we're seeing in the world. Our faith needs to keep moving and allowing God to, to touch our lives and to strengthen our lives. Because the moment that you begin to sort of settle down and and believe it's enough just to talk about it is the moment the enemy can come in and start distracting you and pulling you away from the very essence of how are you going to draw closer to the Lord? What is your plan of action to build your faith? What are you doing to build faith? The Bible makes it very clear. There are actions that we can take to build our faith, and there are some things that can happen in our life to, to cause that faith to be undermined in our lives. And the very thing that's going to help your faith to grow this year is to act upon the things that God expresses through His Word and to Be people that aren't just talking about it, but are walking out their faith. James 2 and 18 says, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. It's not enough just to say I believe. It's that implementation of that belief in your life that will allow you to see things grow and to see that faith become manifested through your actions. So what is a plan of action? What does it mean to have a plan of action? Well, I want to give you some simple things. Now, you've probably heard this. I've probably spoken to these things probably hundreds of times in the years that I've been here at CPR. But they are the basics of building your faith. Without these elements, your faith won't grow. It's essential. It's an imperative. Um, And if you can't do these things, you will see the enemy come in many times and destroy what God is trying to build. So I'm going to give you a plan of action this morning. I want you to write these things down. In fact, this year is a good year. It's a good time to start a daily Bible reading schedule. Now, it sounds elementary, but it's vitally important to read your Bible. The Bible is the very source of faith building. It's important for us to understand. Romans 10 and 17 says, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not putting God's word into your life, then you're truly not allowing God 
to move you to a different place. See, in the spiritual realm, it's not always easily seen. Um, I know in the physical world, we're moved by what we see or what we can taste, what we can hear, what we can sense emotionally. But in faith, you must be willing to make that investment even though at times it doesn't seem like it's real to you or doesn't make sense to your mind. And the way that comes to a pass is through a, a Bible reading regiment or building the faith through the Word of God. And there's several things you can do with the Word of God. First of all, meditate upon the Word. Now, we hand out things here uh, on a regular basis, and it's called um, the Daily Bread. In fact, I get mine off of, offline. I, there, there's a set site that you can go to. You'll just put it in your Google search and say uh, Daily uh, Bread uh, Bible Reading, and you can find that, and it gives you a daily just a scripture to read and then gives you some application that you can take and uh, put towards your life. I would encourage everyone to, to start doing that. Do that daily and meditate upon what God's Word says. Don't just read hurriedly through it. Don't just check it off on your calendar, but really dive in and, and hear what God's saying. Get some supplemental reading to go around. Uh, get a good version of the Bible. I know in the day and age in which we live, some people struggle with, with understanding the Bible. There are... Uh, many, many different resources out there that can help you to, to help better understand the Bible. And that Bible reading can truly uh, get into your spirit and really help you to thrive and grow and, and let your faith be realized. But meditating upon the Word is one way that we can allow the Bible to become more real to us. Memorize the Word. I did this years ago. And I can be honest with you, I memorized Scripture 20 years ago that even now, as I'm facing a challenge, God will bring back to my mind. Because sometimes we don't have a physical Bible with us. Now, I know our phones have it on there, and I do have it on my phone, and I would encourage you to get a Bible on your phone. But it's just so helpful to me when I'm facing a challenge, like when I'm dealing with fear. I mean... I just know immediately. Now, you don't have to know the reference. All you got to know is the Word. The Word is what brings life. But I know that God's not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. And, 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 and when I'm dealing with, with worry, I'm reminded of in the gospel where God tells me not to worry. Jesus says not to worry, that, that he would take care of me. I'm reminded in Philippians 4 and 13 that I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. That's the Word that, 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 that I speak and, I, and I, I share and I acknowledge. And that word brings life to me. So memorizing the word. And, and finally, modeling the word. I think whatever the word says, we need to do. Now, sometimes the word tells me things that it doesn't necessarily align with what I'm feeling. But because the word of God tells me this is the right way to, to live, I, I live according to the word. Now, we live in a world where there's a multitude of uh, of ways that you can live and, and, and be for perfectly fine, but I don't live according to what the standards of the world are. I don't, I don't do something because someone in the world tells me to do it or because some personality has, has expressed that this is what I should do. No, I let the, the Word of God lead my life. And, I, and I've said this so many times. This Word has never failed me. I've failed the Word, but the Word has never failed me. And when I adhere to God's Word and I allow the Word of God to lead me, it always shows me the right way. It helps me to become that person that I want to be. And yes, it requires me sometimes to give up things that are difficult, some things this old flesh wants to do because, you know, it's, it's the flesh and it's, it has a carnal nature. But when I allow the Word to take precedent over the feelings and emotions of my life, it leads me to better places. may not always make sense, but... I know that it's the right thing to do. And so with my Bible and my meditation, my memorization, and my modeling of the Word, that Word comes alive. Not only to me, but those that are looking at me, those that are watching me. It becomes the foundation of faith because it is the way that I find my faith. The next thing we can do is have a community of believers. If there's ever been a time that this has been challenged in my lifetime, it's today. It's this last year, 2020, and we're still dealing with it in 2021. Having a community of believers that can help to bring you the needed support that really is essential for our growth and for our strength. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verses 25 said, Let us not neglect meeting together, having a community together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Now, you're saying, well, this is being, you know, this is sort of causing some difficulties right at this very moment. You're, you're right, it is. But again, we're not limited because of the miracle of technology and because we can communicate with one another, even though we're not physically in the same place. That's, that's part of being com in a community. Now, that's not to say when we're able to come back together, which we will be back together soon, and we're hoping that by April, March or April, that, that we'll be able to fill the building up to overflowing, that um, we shouldn't do that because I think physical contact is something that we all need. Um, but in the, in the time being, we can still connect and whether it be through a text message or a phone call or a letter that is written or an email that is sent, whatever way it takes for you to connect with other believers. See, my faith and your faith combined together really becomes stronger faith. In the Word of God, it even talks about the value of community and how being together to support one another, encourage one another, hold each other accountable. These are areas that, that help us to to overcome the obstacles of our lives. And so we need to be those that can support one another. And we're still trying to do this. Even now as I'm speaking to you and coming to you from a, from a camera, I'm telling you that, that we're here and we want to be of help and encouragement. And though we may have some obstacles around us, we can still be a community that loves one another, that cares for one another, that shares the burden with one another. And we all need these things in order to be successful in life. And I believe in community. I'm a community kind of guy. I love being around people. And, you know, even these last few days where I've sort of separated myself because of some of uh, extenuating circumstances, it's been hard. But it is still a driving force in my life, connecting and talking with each of you. And I, I appreciate you all. You mean a lot to me. Family, friends, church community, I, I do appreciate your prayers and your support. It helps me more than you will ever realize. We need each other. We need Jesus. We need our faith in Jesus. But when we're in a community of others that share the same burdens and are going the same direction, it helps immensely. And finally, we need to have a determination to make it. We've got to be determined to keep moving forward. There are so many opportunities to just throw your hands up and say, Man, I've just had enough. Uh, even as we came here this morning to record, and uh, you know, we were trying to get the, the cameras up and running, and it seemed like, <laughs> you know, there was a part of me at one point that said, forget it. Just forget it. But if I'd have done that, I wouldn't be talking to you right now, perhaps helping you along the journey. Even though the camera wasn't working, the, the program wasn't working at the moment, we just were determined to bring this to you this morning. Because we believe it's important. And, and you're going to have to have that type of determination in your life. There are going to be challenges. You're facing them right now to give up. There are going to be inclinations just to throw your hands up and just say, you know, I'm just going to live like everybody else because it doesn't matter. It does matter. And if you don't have a determination, the devil will definitely defeat you. But if you're determined by... You know, being devoted to God's Word. And you're, you're determined by being devoted to others in the community of faith. And that you're determined by having a plan of action. And, and truly allowing that action to become something that is visible to all, including yourself. See, here's three things that I use as a way of helping to guide me. I hope they help you. Always get up. Always get up. You're going to get knocked down. You're going to have days that you feel like it's just about over. Get up. Always get up. Don't stay still. Keep moving. Keep moving forward. Keep stretching. Keep reaching. As the Apostle Paul said, I forget those things which were behind me, and I reach forward to those things which are before me. Keep getting up. Always get up. No matter how bad the day's been, the previous um, day. Just keep getting up. No matter how much you messed up yesterday, keep getting up. 
No matter how bad you feel in this moment, keep getting up. Keep reaching. Secondly, keep looking up. Look to the Lord. He is your strength. Look to the Lord. He is your help. He's the one that will sustain you. Don't look for others all the time. Look to Him. Yes, God brings others alongside of you to help you in whatever challenge you're facing, but keep looking to the Lord for He is the one that will ultimately bring deliverance to our lives. He's the one that will open the door. He's the one that will always be there for you. Keep looking to Him. I love in the scripture in Psalms where he says, I will look into the hills from whence cometh my strength. My help cometh from the Lord. He's looking up. He's looking to the mountains. But he's literally talking about looking up to the throne room of grace. And finally, never give up. No matter how dark the day, no matter how bleak it may look into your life, never give up. God never gives up on you. God will never give up on you. God sees good in you. God understands you. God sees what you're dealing with right now. Don't you give up in this moment. You keep stretching your faith and you keep believing in the power of God's presence. Hebrews chapter 12, first part of the first verse, it says, Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares you and run with endurance the race that is set before you. Run with endurance. Lay aside those things that are going to discourage you and get you entangled in circumstances that aren't going to be helpful to you. Do you know those areas of your life that hinder you? I believe through prayer and through the study of God's Word and being around a community of believers, those things will, will help you to see those things that hinder you. But it also bring to your realization those things that can help you. And if you keep looking unto the Lord, you keep getting up, you never give up, God will sustain you. God will be your strength because God's got a work that he's doing in the earth. And that work in your life begins in you. There are people God want to touch through your life. You say, well, who am I? I think we all could say that. Who am I? If I'm in the hands of a all-powerful God, I am a mighty weapon. But there are always going to be opportunities to sort of get sidetracked, to do it halfway, to just be lethargic and apathetic. No. Invest in your own life. Invest in your faith. Let it be the cornerstone of the activity of God in your life because if you will allow God to work in you, and, and here's the beauty of it all, He will allow your life not only to be changed, but to be a changing agent for others. See, I believe that's the power of our faith. That it not only changes us, it changes the circumstances for others too. We become that light for the world to see. Bill Hybels tells an interesting experience tells of an interesting experience he had at a baptismal service at his church i think i've shared this story before but i feel like this is a great illustration of the power of faith that doesn't give up and keeps persevering a faith that keeps growing he said he bumped into a woman in the stairwell as she was crying at this baptismal service and he thought it was a bit odd because it was such a joyful service So he asked the lady why she was crying. She says, I'm struggling. She said, my mom was baptized today. And I had prayed for my mom every day for almost 20 years. But the reason I'm crying is it because I came this close to giving up on her, giving up on faith. At the five-year mark, I said, who needs this? God isn't listening. At the 10-year mark, I said, why am I wasting my breath? At the 15-year mark, I said, this is absurd. At the 19-year mark, I said, I'm just a fool. But I just kept trying, kept praying. Even when my faith was weak, I prayed for her. I lifted her up before the Lord. And then finally, she gives her life to Christ. And she's baptized today. I, I was never so blessed but also so burdened and I will never doubt the power of prayer 
and faith again. Sometimes when we pray and try to live out our faith, we feel like we're just experiencing the law of diminished returns, that we're not getting anything out of our prayers. And it causes us to have diminished dreams and desires. We start believing God doesn't care, that He won't act on our behalf. But keep praying, keep believing, keep building your faith because God is working when you can't see it, when you don't understand it. And I believe as we are persistent in building this faith, that at some point in time, I'm reminded of His Word again. He always brings it back to my mind. Even when I'm preaching sermons, He reminds me of what He told us in Galatians where He said, Grow not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you do not faint. I believe it's Galatians. It could be Romans. Sometimes I get the particular verses mixed up, but the word is the same. God is faithful. If you will build your faith, God will build you. He will build you into a place. A foundation will be built to which everything you do, God will bless God will prosper. These are just parts of building out a life of faith. Prayer is essential in building faith. The Bible is essential to building faith. Community is essential to building faith. Determination is essential to building faith. Where are you at in the construction of your faith this morning? Has your foundation weakened over this last year? Today would be a good time to start reconstructing that faith. Start building that faith. Let the belief become more than words that you express, but be a life that you live. I believe God wants to touch us. I believe God wants to change us. I believe 2021 can be an awesome year, but it all starts with faith. And I just encourage you today, no matter where you're at in your faith, whether you're strong in faith or whether you're weak in faith, keep building your faith for God will cause something wonderful to happen as you allow Him to work in your life. I want to say a prayer, and maybe you're sitting where you're at in your living room or your dining room, at your dining room table, maybe in the car when you see. I don't know where you're at, but I'm going to ask the Lord right now to begin to just speak into your heart and if you need some help in building your faith, reach out to us through an email or through a text message, a phone call. Let us know at the church. We want to put the right kinds of things in your hands that can help you build faith. And don't let the fact that maybe we're separated by distance right now keep you from starting that plan. In fact, I will refer back to even fasting and prayer over these next 21 days. These are faith-building practices that can reap a great reward if we will make the investment. So I was coming here today and I was thinking about the foundations of faith and I was just meditating on what I would share today and something the Lord just dropped into my spirit I feel like is important to sort of as we begin this new year. Two elements, two elements that are required to build a solid foundation. It's time and energy. You must devote time to it and energy to it. If you'll give time and energy, there's nothing God can't do. Let this be the beginning of a great year by building your foundation of faith. Father, I am so thankful that you have never given up on me, that you have helped me, Lord, through my own struggles with my own faith. And there have been times, Lord, where I felt so weak, so overwhelmed. But yet, Lord, you have been faithful to me through it all. And, Lord, I know there are many that will be watching this, that are watching this. That, Lord, they want to believe. But sometimes, God, their faith is weak and they just can't see it. Father, I pray even in this moment that you would speak to their hearts. And that let their faith, that seed that you have given us all, that small seed that though 
many can't see it. Lord, you see it. And Lord, as they invest, if they give the time and energy to that seed of faith in their life, God, it will grow. And it will grow in such a manner that truly it will be seen by all. God, if there's some that feel like they're undeserving, let them feel your grace overwhelm them, overshadow them. For some are weak and weary today, Lord, let your spirit bring strength to their life. And help each one, God, as they make the investment in their faith by reading your word. God, by connecting with other people. Lord, by being determined, by praying in every manner. God, I pray that their faith would grow and it would be strong. And if there's someone even in this moment that is looking to establish faith, let them confess their need to you, Father. Express their devotion to Jesus, admitting their need, God. And Father, I know that your word says you will dwell in their heart. Help each one, I pray. Guide us and direct us all. And Lord, we'll give you thanks and praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank each of you for tuning in today. Again, don't forget to share this with someone else. And uh, again, if you need to give in any way, there are ways that you can give through our website. Have any questions, please feel free to give us a call. We look forward to bringing the Bible study to you on Wednesday. I'll be tuning in at 7 p.m. Be sure you tune into that. And we will give you updates over the course of the week in terms of when our next gathering in the building may be. But until then, God bless you. God keep you. May his face shine down upon you that you might experience his perfect peace. God bless you and have a great day.